Hey, hey, you guys, it's Tuesday. It's the first Tuesday of January 2021. This is Anything But Average, Achieving Success in Life. I am Trisha Turner, and I have Rob Trigg with me here today. Welcome, Rob. Thank you so much for having me. I mean, I, I, I feel very honored that I'm able to get on this with you, and I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you so much. I think it's freaking awesome that you're on here with me. I want to give everybody a little bit of a backstory. So for those that don't know you out there, Rob Trigg, um, first of all, we were just talking before we got on. He had his first baby girl last year. Um, so it was his first Christmas with her. Super cute pictures to see of them on Facebook. But I met Rob a couple of years ago um, and we came to get really well connected because I had an opportunity that fell into my lap to purchase some real estate. And of course, I'm self-employed and did not have things in order as they should be. And I needed to make something happen real quick. And so I knew about hard money loans, but I needed a really good connection. And so everybody was like, you got to talk to Rob Trick. He's the one to go to. He's with Jet Lending and he will take care of you. So he did. I am a living testimony. It was the smoothest thing I've ever done. Um, buying property 1000%. So I will highly recommend him for that. And so Rob, if you could share with everybody a um, what you do for a living. Of course, I just gave away your company and how long you've been doing it and why you love it so much. Well, you know, it, so basically, let me give you a little outline of, of what we do. We lend on investment properties. Uh, uh, we lend uh, typically kind of outside the box type of lending for uh, investors. Uh, your property was an investment property, you know, where you're going to get your, you know, your, uh, your office and stuff uh, established. And <clears throat> we were happy to do it for you. Uh, typically we cannot lend on any owner occupied properties. Um, where it's strictly for investing and strictly for investment strategies. Uh, the good thing about hard money is that when you get told no, 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 typically we can make that happen for you. Um, how I got started. Well, I'll tell you a story, a uh, very interesting story. My brother-in-law is part owner in this company. And uh, I came with, I used to come visit my sister, um, which he's married to for 26 years now. Um, I used to come visit them all the time in the woodlands. And I was in the army for, you know, 21 years and I'd come visit them. And my kind of my last trip, summer trip that I would make over here, I made it over here to come see Johnny and Lee. And they surprised me with a concert. We went and saw Tim McGraw and, some other people, we got in a limo. I mean, it was all fun and everything uh, over in, um, it's over in Louisiana. On the trip over there, me and Johnny were drinking some beers and, you know, we were like, he's like, so what are you going to do when you retire? I was like, you know, I'm thinking about joining uh, the the Texas, uh, what they, the BPS. Uh, be a okay. Highway Patrol, high, really? highway Patrol. Yeah. I was like, you know, that's interesting. They, they accept, uh, um, prior service, you know, the, the pay is good. And the, you know, I can get in there, do 20 years and then I'll have two retirements and I'll be retired twice, you know, by the time I'm 60 years old, I'd just be done. You know, yeah. he said, that's the dumbest idea I've ever heard. <laughs> I said, if you knew Johnny, he was joking at the time, you know, Johnny's you've, I, I think you've been involved and talked to Johnny a couple of times. So too. He like, well, used to be the redneck. Uh, what, yeah, oh my yeah. Redneck. He's like, can't he's like, Rob, why you want to do that? Why, that that's, just, that's just dumb. Why why you want to do that? I was like, I don't know, Johnny. He's like, come on out here. We, you know, we'll get you involved in this real estate game, blah, blah, blah. You know, I was like, real estate? I was like, that has never even, you know, been a on my Okay, real estate. You know, I, what, what about real estate? Well, I kind of buckled down a little bit when I got back home and started doing a little bit of studying and asking questions to realtors that I knew that, you know, in the area and stuff. And I was just like, hey, you know, is it profitable? He's like, yeah, it's very profitable. They go, go through their numbers, started studying what title companies do, started studying what real estate does. And when I got out of the army, 
I, I moved here, got my real estate license, went out independently uh, with uh, a team in the Woodlands, learned a little bit on that side, on the residential side. Wasn't really my cup of tea. I picked up the phone and called Johnny and said, hey, um, I'm interested in doing something something else. I'm not the type of guy that wants to go show 15 properties to you know, <laughs> to somebody on a Saturday morning and then they pick the first house that we showed. That's not something I want to do. And he's like, well, why don't you come over here, Jet Lending? We use another loan officer. Um, you know, come over here. We'll get you. I was like, yeah, Johnny, I don't want to be the brother-in-law that came in. And he's like, look, just come over here. We'll get you, we'll get you in, you know, start closing some loans. You'll make some money. Well, I initially started it just to kind of make some more money. You know, I was I, I had retirement coming in. I had my benefits, all that stuff. So I was like, you know what? Okay, I'll come over here and make a, make a few extra dollars. Never in five years ago, never in my wildest dreams would I be the senior loan officer here at Jet Lending. Ne <laughs> that was not even that was not even in my scope. I was just going to come in here, close a couple loans a month, make a few extra dollars and just be, Lord, I've gotten married since then. I've got a kid now. I've got uh, a mortgage. Uh, did I mention I got a wife that loves to go to Hobby Lobby? <laughs> You're busy as crap too. I'm, I'm busy all the time. It's like, I don't even have time to think anymore. I was like, mm -hmm. I retired. Y'all do remember that, right? And then, <laughs> But anyways, I, I love what I do because the satisfaction of helping somebody achieve their goals and achieve their dreams by, by flipping a property or, or getting a rental and getting yeah. that long-term loan through the whole process and achieving, I mean, you're taking something that's ugly and turning it into something that's beautiful. That's what we do on a daily basis with hard money loans. And to see that process and to see those clients be happy and be, and, and make some money and put money in their pocket, that, that means something, you know, that, that they're, oh, this, yeah. is their, this is their retirement money. This is their long-term nest egg. And they need people that they trust and people that they can, you know, talk to like a normal person. You know, I've had so many dealings with loan officers throughout my life because uh, I bought some properties myself. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of studied that and I was like, you know what, why do you have to be so rigid and so, I don't know what the word is. Yeah. Difficult. I mean, I, difficult. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of loan officers that are very difficult to talk yeah. to. I try to make it as easy as possible and as friendly as possible so that they know that they're coming in and getting a, a good product. You know, so, so that because not everybody understands what a hard money loan is. So can you kind of for those that are watching, we have a lot of real estate agents that watch the show. Can you let them know what is the difference between conventional financing? Then you got FHA financing and now you got a hard money loan. What's the difference? Yeah. So conventional financing, and I'm going to, I'm going to talk about three different types of loans. All right. Conventional financing is what you use for, uh, it's Freddie and Fannie Mae, uh, regulated. It's what you do to buy, you know, your personal home or a rental home, long-term mortgage. If you can qualify, meaning debt to income ratio, all those parameters that you have to fall into for long-term conventional loan. I mean, that they, there's a list of things you've got. Your DTI has got to be perfect. You know, you've got to go through the the ins and outs of, hey, when was this check deposited? Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I, need, I, I, I need letters of explanation on <laughs> how long you've been working at your job. Yep. Uh, oh, by the way, we need a blood sample, DNA <laughs> sample. We need to make sure that you're, you're Rob Trigger. You're, you know, Miss Turner and, and mm -hmm. like, OK, it's it's a very difficult process, but they underwrite it strict because there's risk involved yep. that, you know, because your your interest rates are lower. So the, the risk is a lot higher. Um, you know, if they lose money, they're losing money plus interest, you know, on, on a property. And um, the down payment often is lower with conventional financing. Correct? Yeah, your payments are lower. Because your interest rates are low uh, yep. and that's conventional financing. It, you know, that's the way most people know how to get jobs done. Okay. Yep. Um, or not get jobs done, get loans done. You know, that that's what everybody thinks of when they're going to get a loan. Mm -hmm. When you come to jet lending, it's only for investment properties. 
only. Um, <clears throat> there's two different types of loans you get with us. One is a temporary loan to get the property and do an equity increase or a buy, fix, and sell or a buy, fix, and hold. Meaning you're taking the property, you're buying it, you're going to go in and do repairs, and then you're going to sell it for top of the market for a profit. That's okay. one strategy you come to Jet Lending for. Number two, buy, fix, and hold. You buy the property, you fix it, do either rent-ready repairs or full repairs. Okay. You get the property ready to rent. Now, there's those two strategies fall under buy, fix, and hold for short-term money, meaning three to six months short-term money. Okay. Once you're done with the rehab and it's rent ready or you did a full-blown rehab, so you your deferred maintenance is not every time somebody moves out, it'll last you about 10 years. Or you just do rent ready repairs where you go in every time somebody moves out and change the carpet or do do a little bit of upgrades, but it's still rent ready and you can put a, 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 a you could put a renter in there immediately. Um, you know, th 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 that's another strategy that, that our buy, fix, and hold, meaning you're going to be a landlord, uses. Now, we, we now have products that are called non-QM, non-qualifying mortgages, okay. which is not a traditional mortgage. And this is when you use jet lending for those. It's a 30-year loan or it's a three-year arm. <clears throat> now, what, what they do is they go off of the income approach of the property. Okay. Meaning <clears throat> they're not going to underwrite you like a Franny, Freddie and Fannie Mae will. They're going to underwrite you and says, is this property income producing? Does it have a debt service cover ratio of a 1.2 to 1.1 or higher? Meaning your rents are bringing in income at least a percent and a point or percent and a quarter higher than what your, you know, uh, PI. Yeah. Okay. So, and that's, that, that's how we do our lending uh, for long-term and short-term. Um, hard money is a way to use somebody else's or an acronym. I like to use OPM, other people's money to get investment properties done. So you're not putting all of your, nest egg into one property and not able to cash that money out for five or six, seven years, you know, till it builds up that equity. You use so, my money. Go ahead. On the short term one, what walk me through one of those. Give me a scenario. What would it be? Um, what kind of an interest rate per se, like in our current timeline, um, January, 2021 um, down payment. What kind of down payment are you looking at? Is there a certain property type? Kind of walk through that so people watching will understand. So, so on a short term, we'll just make this simple: buy, fix, and sell. Not not holding the property. Okay. On a buy, fix, and sell, you're looking for properties that are below market value, way below market value. What we do is we evaluate that property and we loan off of what's called an after repair value. Okay. Meaning, in your terminology, what's selling top of the market. 2021 standard updates like it's got the granite you know it's got the 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 stainless steel appliances it's got you know all the 2021 current feature home of the homes you know right. and we we evaluate those properties and say hey this is what everything's selling for so let's just take an easy scenario okay let's say for instance that we get a property that will sell for two hundred thousand okay um 200,000, 70% of that is 140. So that's my total loan that I can lend on that property. Okay. It's always 70% of the after repair value. Okay. You probably say, oh, well, I've got it under contract for 140. Stop. Wait. Yes, that's a discount, but you're still got to account for your repair cost. How much is it going to cost you to get that property to 200,000? Let's say for this instinct, or this instance, your your property is going to have forty thousand in repairs. At the closing table, I can lend a hundred thousand of that one hundred and forty at towards your purchase price. Okay. So your purchase price needs to be somewhere close proximity to that hundred thousand in order for you to make a, a good twenty to thirty percent off of that property when you sell it. Yeah. 
So it's all encompassing. The property is, uh, my loan is includes your repair cost plus your acquisition cost. Okay. So, so on those were people coming to the table with cash down payment. Yes. 30%. They, they don't have to, they need to be buying the property. That's why it's so important when we teach that you, the 70% method, as far as your uh, buying method, you're always 70% minus repairs should be, should be close to that is your offer on your properties. Okay. A lot of people just say, oh, well, I'm going to offer 140. Well, then you're going to be 40,000 plus closing cost. You're going to be in a problem. Yeah. yeah. And that gets to be a problem. They're like, well, that doesn't make sense. Well, it does make sense if you want to make a 20 to 30 percent profit on selling it. If you're all into this property, you know, a 140 loan plus 40 percent out of pocket. Hell, you're 180 in it. And you don't even realize. Yeah. That and, happens, and, I bet, all the time. Yeah, and you're 180 into the property, meaning you got 20,000 to spare. Hey, you got a six percent, uh, six to seven percent sale cost because you got to pay your realtor to list it. You got to pay your realtor yeah. uh, uh, three percent on the other side of the buyer. So you take three percent, six percent of, I don't know, of 200,000. Of six percent, that's twelve thousand plus yeah. another uh, another one point five percent to your title company. By that time, you've got four thousand left. Hey, <laughs> you may have a good golf trip somewhere. <laughs> so, in a scenario like that, say now this is brand new, you know, twenty twenty one. We believe in the real estate industry that this is going to be a phenomenal year. 2020 was an amazing year in real estate. 2021 is supposed to be even better, y'all. So if you're creating wealth, if you're building wealth and you're wanting to get into house flipping or long-term rentals or whatever, Rob's going to be your guy to talk to. So in that scenario, Rob, would you recommend they get check with you first before they ever even go find a property or how does that work? What's best? Well, practice? It's typically what, what we want to do is that, yes, they can check with me. We'll get them a pre-approval so that they are uh, empowered to go buy properties. Okay. Uh, the way we do that is it's very simple uh, on a buy, fix and sell. I don't care what your credit score is. I, I can oh, care yeah. less what your, I, I can care less what your sc credit score is on a buy, fix and sell. You could have a 400, 450 credit score. Come to me. I'll get you approved. Okay. Mm -hmm. What I do care about is yes, 450 credit score, but how much cash do you have in the bank? Meaning, do you have six months of interest payments in reserves to make payments on this property? Do you have at least one third of the repair cost? If that's a yes on any property, then I'll approve you and get the loan closed. Now, I'm going to underwrite it to protect jet lending because of your credit history. Sure. But I could still do the loan and make it make sense for both of us. So um, in a scenario like today's interest rate, say it's just 3% today. What kind of interest? I know you can't give exact interest rates because everybody's different, but a ballpark. What could somebody be looking at? So, so private money is a lot different than uh, conventional financing. Okay, um, we have to go to bank lines uh, and and capital partners to get our money. That way, we can keep sixty million on the street every month. Um, it's not like a conventional financing where they take it, package it up, sell it to Wall Street. And, you know, they've got they've got the big banks that are holding those notes of, you know, Bank of America, blah, blah, blah. You know, your big banks that are servicing those loans and keeping them on their books. Yeah. Our money is is typically more expensive. So we're at 11 to 12 percent for our short term money. Remember, it's six months, not long term. Our long term stuff being that it's non QM and they're going off of you know, strictly the income of the property, you're somewhere mid sixes to sevens for your long-term 30. Now people still say, man, that's expensive for 30 years, but Freddie and Fannie is going to cap you out to where you can only have up to 10 investment properties. Everybody wants more, Yeah. you know, 20, 30, 40 investment properties. When yeah. you get to that 10 cap with Freddie and Fannie Mae, you cannot buy any more. Um, and depending on how much, um, how much uh, income you have or how much li liquid reserves you have, they may cap you off at five or six. Sure. Uh, then say, no, no more. We're not going to let you buy anymore. That's when you come to me and say, hey, look, 
I can't buy any more, uh, you know, investment rentals. Can you help me out? And we we will be more than happy to get those deals done for you. Now you're going to pay a little bit higher interest because it's the underwriting procedures are different, so it's higher risk. So yes, the interest rates are a little bit higher. So in a scenario like that, is it also you don't care about credit score? What's your guideline? No, 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 no. no. Only for flips do I not care about credit right. score. Buy, fix, and sell. Buy, fix, and hold. Standard credit score across the board, 680. Middle score or higher. Okay. Middle score. Your middle score has to be 680 or higher. And on those, what about a down payment? What are we looking at there? Now, those typically, if you're outright purchasing it, Mm -hmm. it, it's a lo yeah, it's a loan loan to cost scenario. Usually about seventy five percent loan to cost. Okay, uh, meaning whatever your purchase price is, you'll be seven. They'll loan seventy five percent of that. Okay. Now, if it's a refinance, they'll do seventy five percent of the as is value. Okay. And that's that's very important to remember on on these uh on these properties that when you're either buying them or refinancing. It's so why a lot of my investors will close with hard money first. Yes, it's two closings. They'll do that equity increase, keep it for six months, and, and do do a do the rehab, get get it up to higher value, and then refinance and do a cash out to where they can get their some of their money back out of the property. You know, some of the economists are projecting um, this year will be the year of foreclosures, the resurgence of foreclosures. I believe that's crap. I don't see that at all happening. Um, but there probably are people out there that are, you know, want to be investors. And so they're going to be probably talking to you, I'm sure. Yes. To try to get you know, in hopes that that is happening. What I have heard, future? I have heard so many different um, people talk on this. Um, mm -hmm. I, I would I would have felt that it has already started happening the foreclosures, mm -hmm. and it hasn't. Uh, now yeah. I could be wrong. Uh, it's probably may hit first quarter really hard. Um, I I I think more people are. I I, I honestly don't know, uh, and I feel the I I feel that there are going to be some foreclosures in twenty twenty one. I do I feel it's going to be as massive as they say. No, I think people are getting back to work. I think people yeah, are, are, um, you know, it, 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 and it all depends on what happens first quarter. Are we going to be put on another lockdown? Are right. people going to be out of work? Um, I think with 2020, what people have realized is that they can do their jobs in a different capacity. Um, and they're starting to find out that, they can hire people to do different things from home and, and it's created a different job market, I think, out there for a lot of people. Um, Here's a scenario I'll run by you that I can see. And if anyone's watching and they never thought about this, I hope you guys will share it. So um, when this COVID thing first came about and then furloughs were being issued, a lot of furloughs were being issued by these big companies. You know, the mindset was that, this COVID thing is going to only last a few months and then people are going to go back to work and la la la. And that didn't happen. And it still keeps lingering on. And so a lot of people, instead of a furlough, it turned into, I don't have a job at all. Actually, I don't, I'm not going to, I'm now looking for a job. And so the mindset when that first began was, you know, in the national average statistics show that over 50% of homeowners have almost 50% equity in their house. So mm. when you think about that, the mindset, why there was going to be no foreclosure, closures is because these homeowners would be able to pull cash out and live and survive off their cash during this hard time. However, no one really thought of, well, what if the furlough turns into, I don't have a job because you can't get a cash out refi if you don't have a job. Yeah. So what has ended up happening and several of my clients have done it and I see many still doing it is that they aren't able to get their cash out, but they need their cash because now they're getting into a situation. So rather than getting behind on their payment, rather than giving their house away to some investor, they're putting it on the market right now because the market's hot as crap and we can sell it for top dollar and they're mm -hmm. turning into renters or they're going into a hard money loan because they've got cash. They've got yeah. cash. You don't care, you know, per se about their credit score. If it's an investment property, yes. 
but there's a scenario for everyone. And so mm -hmm. rather than turning into a renter, perhaps they could turn into an investor. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of different ways to spin that. And I think mm -hmm. it would be a great opportunity for you, A, eh? and for people who are looking at an investment instead of looking at crap. I can't uh, go buy a house right now. Well, maybe you can. There's always a solution. There's always a way. Maybe you can't go the convention away, but maybe you need to talk to Rob and you've probably got a crap ton of cash that you just got out of your house. And before you go signing a lease agreement, have a conversation with Rob and let's see if we can get you back in a home. Yes. Yes. That, that's absolutely true. Uh, as long as it's an investment property and it's, and, and you, and that's the strategy. It cannot be, it cannot be owner occupied. It has to be, you know, renter investment and, and putting your money to work for you long term. Absolutely. And, you know, because of a, that same scenario, the rental market is on fire because homes that were sitting for so long now are being taken up by people that once were homeowners. Now they've become renters short term, mm -hmm. maybe a year or two while they get their jobs back and they get their credit score back and all that. But it's just a different world that we're living in. It's not black and white. It's not simple. It's just complex. But if you have an open mind and you know the right people and you're aligned with the right people that can guide you and help you, there's always a, a better way. And I believe yes. 2020 is going to make us all look at that better way. How can, how can we be smarter with our money and protect our investments better? And I think you offer such a great opportunity for so many people. We, we love to call it creative financing. Yep. You know, creative financing. What, how can you make, how can you make something happen when Freddie and Fannie have shut you down? Uh, again, I, and I have to reemphasize this because a lot of realtors do watch your, your program. Hard money lenders cannot lend on owner occupied properties. Yep. I get at least three to five phone calls a day and I'm not kidding. Hey, I've got a guy that, that busted out at the closing table. Can you help him out? My first question is, um, are they going to live in the property? And if the answer is yes, it's an automatic hard no for us. Um, yeah. It's just, it's a hard no. It has to be a, an investment property. A, you're going to run your business out of it. Uh, B, you're going to use it as a vacation rental. Yep. Uh, three, you're going to, uh, you're, you're going to, you're going to use it as um, a rental property or, or you're going to buy it, you're fix it and sell it. Yep. Um, those are the three scenarios I can work with. The other one, if you plan on moving into this property at any time, we cannot do that. Long. The reason why is because it's, it, it's a mortgage and we're not allowed to do mortgages. Yep. Yeah. So it's only investment lending. And um, again, though, when you've got people with cash, you know, like Grant Cardone, I follow Grant Cardone. He believes you should never own your primary residence, you know? So he does. He says that. And that's, that's odd to me because <laughs> I'm just like, but, but he's, he's telling the truth, but in, I'm on the flip side of that. Why do I want to pay somebody else's equity down? Like I know. <laughs> I know. I'm on the flip it's, side of that too. Like, it's just it's crazy. Yeah, it's like, but he's, he, hey, he makes a lot more money than I do, but he's he's never paying it, but he has a lot of rentals, and he, but he's never paying his own equity down. And I'm like, that just makes no sense. Now, he may be living in one of his LLC's rentals, which a lot of people don't, don't think about that strategy as well. Right. Like his LLC owns it, and he pays his LLC the, right. the equity, which he may be just kind of using that as a play on words, like, he'll buy it and put it under his LLC and then rent, pay the rent back to his LLC. That way it shows as a profit, yeah. which, you know, Hey, that that's a way, way, way to keep your investments down and you don't own any property. Mm -hmm. But you know, he also has this philosophy that the more doors you own, the more money you make. And so that tip goes right back into what you were just talking about, where you get capped with these conventional, you know, investor loans at 10 properties and you're like, bring it on. We'll go. Bring it on. On. Come on. Any, <laughs> if, if, if you get denied, come on. If it's an investment property, come over here and you're going to pay a little bit more in your interest rate, but I can get the deals done. Hey, so can anyone come to you for multifamily? Can you do that? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I do multifamily flips. I have a, a 30 year commercial long-term uh, strategy. 
Uh, the, the biggest thing about that is rural areas. Uh, I cannot do any rural areas on multifamily okay. and I cannot do rural areas for um, my long-term investment strategy on my, uh, on rentals. Okay. Um, it's gotta, it's gotta be in a well-populated area. Beaumont, I can do Houston area, spring woodlands, you know, Conroe, Galveston, those are all good. But if it's if it's in an area that's considered rule by standards, I, it, it just it's very tough to get that past uh, the underwriters. And what's turn times for closing with yours? Are they all pretty darn quick? Because I know when I was working with you, I was like, you were ready before I was. I'm like, hold on a second. I'm not ready yet. <laughs> so so it, on on the on the on those short term strategy, meaning six a year a year or less. Um, you only need the money for short term, like your, your investment. And you'll talk about it here in a minute. Hey, I'm, I just need the money until I, I get my long-term strategy squared away. Um, I could close in seven to 10 business days. Uh, it's very quick, very to the point. Our underwriting is boom, boom, boom. We, we've got this down to the science. Um, on the long-term side, it takes anywhere from 30 to 45 days. Okay, so the norm. Anything over a year, you, hey, I'm, I know I'm, I want a 30 year loan on this. It's, it's, it's the same as closing a conventional loan. Okay. The um, first time. The same? Huh? Commercial or multifamily the same? Yeah, it's it, commercial. If it's a flip, it's still going to be 30 days. Um, saying you're going to buy a piece of commercial property, uh, meaning five doors or more. Um, and you're going to flip it. It's going to be 30 days or more. And not because I can't do it quicker. The appraisal is what takes so long. Okay. Um, appraisals for commercial property. And a lot of people don't know they're, you know, t three to $4,000 just for the appraisal. Okay. And it takes, it takes the, the appraiser three to four weeks, sometimes a little quicker to get those done because he's having to do so much investigating on the property He's having to go and do an income approach. He's having to make sure that, you know, it's a solid investment and that it will cash flow for you. Okay. I mean, it's not just as simple as going and throwing some comps in there and saying, you know, hey, there's a bunch of these. On commercial properties, he's got to go search for those comps because it's a little harder to find them. You know, so rumors go around, of course, about the commercial industry imploding and property values going into the toilet this year. Uh, what's your thoughts on the commercial market there here in Houston? Uh, hey. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you, I, hey, I'm going to tell you, I, I kind of agree. Um, and I'll tell you why. Um, 2020, as I said earlier, has kind of gotten people creative on how they can operate their business strategies. Yeah. They don't need those hard structures to do their business anymore. I think you're going to see a lot of people going mobile. It's already happened. Yeah. Um, heck, uh, I'm not saying I, I know a company um, that has actually thought about it. Um, and that, that's us. That we've thought about going completely mobile. Not saying we are. Not saying we haven't uh, uh, or we will. But we have thought about it. We've got yeah. some of our in-house people that are working mobile yep. um, because, you know, it's just it, we've we've got the programs and everything in place to do it. For I, I can close. I was at hunting uh, uh, with with one of my owners, Eddie. He invites me every year. I love going over there to Mississippi. He's got beautiful land over there. Beautiful I bet. Land. It's hilarious. Oh, it's it's awesome. We go over there and we have so much fun. It's a, it's a, it's a stress release It's pressure release. You know, you just go over there and Eddie's always a great guy to hang out with. If you've never had a beer with Eddie, you need to put that on your calendar. I'm telling you that right now. Yes. Um, but just to have that opportunity and we don't talk about work. We don't talk about anything. We talk about deer hunting and having a good time. Yep. And if I need him to look at a file, he will. But typically when he's over there, he's in a, he's in a, Hey, we're here to hunt. I closed, four loans in a week being mobile. Didn't have to, <laughs> you know, I didn't have to sit behind my desk, yeah. have my laptop, I, I put my notes in. We got final numbers and got everything prepped and ready to go and got, got those deals closed. And he was sit, sitting right beside me at the dinner table while I was typing. He's like, what you think about the loan? And I let him look at it and he's like, tell him EG approves. 
So, I mean, we're sitting there, you know, having breakfast right there at the, uh, at the dinner table. And he looked at it and I was typing. He looked at the pictures. He looked at the loan. He's like, you just put in there, EG approved. And so <laughs> I, I did what he told me to. And we, we closed loans like that. I mean, it's, it's easier now. So I think back to your, your statement, I think a lot of commercial properties are going to be put for sale here really soon. I think it's already happened. People that have some money maybe need to a be smart about your purchase, make sure you're not overpaying for something in a decline <clears throat> market. Um, and then of course you need to talk to Rob if you need some financing. Hey, before I forget though, too, the that was that a, a monthly thing that was at the the investor meeting that we were going to because that it was, was. Came and knocked it all out. Tell it, everybody it about that, please. So we we had a monthly meeting. We we do it online right now because of the current pandemic with COVID, um, where it was out at the Republic Country Club out Stafford. As soon as we closed up shop there and said this will be our last event for 2021, he actually put that on the market and closed it down. Are he you sure? Did. It's for sale. I think it's still for sale right now. Wow. Um, I, I, I think he saw the writing on the wall. Uh, far before anybody else did and said, you know what? I, I don't see this regaining what it was even after COVID happens. He's a very, the guy that owns it. Uh, a lot of people will either like him or don't like him. His name's Michael Berry. Um, very smart investor, very smart businessman. Um, he's got, he's, he's got some insight that some people uh, do not agree with, but, you know, hey, it, it is what it is. You know, you either yeah. love people or you don't. Um, I will say this, that uh, he saw the writing on the wall and put it out for sale. And I, I think he filed bankruptcy on it. I'm not 100% sure. So don't quote me on that. No. And, um, but, you know, that was like such a cool event. I mean, you had grown it. Y'all had grown it. So, like, wasn't it 900 people in attendance? Uh, 900 to a thousand every month. Yeah, y'all. It was like a bunch of investors, real estate people, lenders, jet lending. And there were so many people there teaching you. Teach, somebody would get up and speak, teaching you about how to be smart with your money, how to invest, how to use IRAs for your money. So many different things you can do instead of just letting your money sit in the bank doing nothing, especially in times right now where there's people out there, you guys making a lot of money. Well, let's put it to work. Learn how to use it. Learn how to, to protect yourself and your family and your future. And Rob, you got you to gotta bring it into Rob to talk to him for sure. I'll give you what my, what ended up happening in my life. You know, I'm always looking for opportunities. I'm very open minded um, and I have the American Dream Show and a lady had called me to list her property and she started talking about her property and it was about an hour and a half away. And I'm like, um, actually, I think I need to just come look at that property for myself because it sounds like a really good investment. She had bought it as an investment. She had fixed it up. And I saw a huge opportunity, not only to have a real estate office, but also as an Airbnb. So it was it opened up multiple doors, but it happened in my it dropped in my lap. I was not prepared for it. I wasn't even seeking it. It was in my five year plan, but it wasn't in like then. And so financially, I didn't have all my ducks in a row. And so I applied for conventional financing and got, you know, did got denied because I did not have things in a row. And so I sought help. Of course, I'm seeking who am I going to go to? And Rob, he made my dream come true because I was so frustrated. I was like, how can I get denied? I'm like this perfect, you know, I pay my bills on time. I got money. To pay. I'm like this perfect picture, but I'm self-employed. And it's a harder thing to swallow when you're self-employed. Banks don't like it. And no, so, no. man, I got on the phone with Rob. He was so fast. He, I can text him at eight o'clock at night. Like, what happened? Where are we with this? And he's like, boom, right back at you. I mean, I'm not kidding y'all. The appraisal was the only thing that took the longest, but it was literally done in just a couple of days. And he was like, where are we at? Let's get this thing done. Are you ready? <laughs> and it was, I mean, he made my dreams come true for sure. Yeah. And and that's what it's all about. It's, it's all about making people's nest eggs or retirement plans. Cause I, I mean, people are literally getting into these properties as trying to build wealth, yep. uh, sustainable wealth mm -hmm. for long term, that way that they can, when they're in their 50s and 60s, they can stop working so hard and get in early to where I call it mailbox money or building wow. their, their their liquid up to a point that they can say, you know what, I'm going to make my money make money for me. 
um, and invest it. You know, we have we have private people that give us, uh, you know, their cash to make a return on it here at Jet Lending as well. Um, so if you're watching and you've got a couple hundred thousand you want to park and get a good return on, be more than happy to help you with that as well. We don't act actively uh, advertise that, but, you know, we, we do give a nice return on that as well. Um, it's all, but back to this, my statement, it's all about making somebody's dreams come true and making somebody's investment dreams come true. And, and that, 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 that helps my heart, you know, go, go, go to bed and able, able to sleep better at night, you know, and know that eventually I'll be able to pass down some of my fortune to my kids and say, Hey, you know, you're going to have a better life than I did because I took a risk and went to work for jet lending. I love that. That is a great way to end this episode. That's perfect, Rob. Hey, tell everybody where they can find you to learn more about hard money loans or just have a conversation with you. How can they look you up? You can call me uh, on my cell phone at 903-806-4400. Again, that's 903-806-4400. Or you can email me at rob at jetlending.com. And of course, he's on Facebook and he's on social everywhere. And I'll be sharing this yeah. all over the place. And if you can't find him, you come talk to me and I'll hook you guys up for sure. Yeah. Rob's a great guy. He's always available. He returns phone calls. He usually answers the phone and he he's always just there to help you guys out and guide you. So super happy that you were here with me today, Rob. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I Jet appreciate lending, it. Y'all. Remember that Rob Trigg, Jet Lending. Yes, ma'am. Hey, and I appreciate you letting me on your uh, your podcast and it's it. an awesome experience. Thank you so much. It's going to be a great year, Rob. Yeah, let's have a great 2021. Boom. Y'all have a great day. Bye, uh, thank y'all. You so much. Bye. You're welcome.